Now, so as a school teacher, this is nothing new for me. <laughs> Everyone decides to sit back there. But we'll go ahead and get started so that we're somewhat on time, right? I want to. So uh, welcome to the uh, public meeting for the town plan here with the Planning Commission. Um, 2024 is a year to rewrite a town plan, so we wanted to make sure that um, we, we reached out to our neighbors and that we, we got as much input as we possibly could. Um, I will be the overlord for today, if that's a proper term. Uh, my name is Jared Weiss. A lot of you probably don't know me. I'm new here. Um, I moved here in August. I bought the yellow farmhouse on East Callis, just south of the, the village, the old farmhouse cafe, the big old yellow house there. So uh, that's where I live. But um, so we're here to get your input, your thoughts um, about what we should be including in the town plan. So um, we, we have some things here just to tell you about what a town plan is and the planning commission. And so I'll let some of the other esteemed members of the planning commission uh, I'll take over for just a second. Uh, uh, my name is Gary Root. I've lived here for 40, uh, 42 years, and uh, I live on Route 14 in East Callis, about three quarters of a mile yeah. south of his house. Um, a uh, a town plan. Is this the time for me to talk about the town plan? Yeah. Everybody can introduce themselves. <laughs> yeah, you can yeah. Okay. Do a quick introduction, and then we'll come. Yeah, we'll come back. Okay, um, I'm Vicki Arthur. I've also only lived here maybe a year and a half. Um, got a house um, on Adamant Road, close to Adamant, and um, I have a background with floodplain management. I'm a contractor for the NFIP. I don't know how you feel about them these days, but um, I mostly I work on developing the maps. I have a cartography GIS background, um, and I saw that they needed help on the, I guess, the flood resiliency section of the town plan, so I volunteered, and then eventually I joined the Planning Commission. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Melanie Keene. We're really psyched to have Vicki and other new members, Jared, uh, to Planning Commission. I think we have an empty seat, actually, just saying. Um, and two empty seats, right, with our chair who insists on, on retiring from Planning Commission. I've uh, been here since 1999 in the Adamant area on Martin Road since 2009 and on Planning Commission for a few years. And it's great work, just saying if anybody wants to join us. Thanks for coming, everybody. John, do you want to take over? Uh, John McCullough, I'm on Planning Commission. I'm also a zoning administrator. I've been here since 73. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm Jan Olson, and I've been the chair for the last five years, I think. Uh, and um, I do appreciate all of you coming here this afternoon uh, and really sharing your thoughts, opening your minds, sharing the food. Um, you know, eat, eat while you're up, while we get you going. Um, and with that, um, I think Gary was going to tell us <coughs> what the town plan was about. The uh, Planning Commission is uh, primarily responsible for um, drafting two, two town documents. Uh, one is the zoning that controls how uh, controls land use and development in the town, and the other is the town plan, which is an aspirational document primarily. Um, as an aspirational document, a town plan really is supposed to uh, list and develop uh, what the town really wants for uh, its growth and, um, and future. A uh, town plan is uh, an eight-year document um, uh, drafted by the, by the Planning Commission and approved by the uh, Select Board. And, um, it's, it's a valuable plan as, as an aspirational document. It's valuable just as a statement of who we are. I have an acquaintance that moved to Callis because uh, he and his wife were looking at a, a number of different towns and so they read the town plan from each of the towns and they moved here because of our town plan. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, oh, you know, an engineer, what can I tell you? <laughs> yeah. 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 I've read the town plan. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
And, and a town plan is also, uh, uh, as a, uh, uh, along with the, the zoning bylaws for the town, the, the town plan is a, uh, is a document that is, um, uh, that controls certain aspects of development. So uh, the zoning administrator goes off, almost entirely off the uh, zoning bylaws, but the uh, development review board, which is the, the, the second tier of, of authority in terms of uh, zoning approval, um, they, they are uh, experts not just in implementing what's in the zoning bylaws, but also in the town plan. And then if you take another step up, if you go outside of the town, um, as far as the state agencies that, that have authority over uh, development issues within the town, the, the town plan is the thing that they look at. They'll, they might look at zoning, but they might not, but they always look at the town plan to make decisions on where things, where certain things can happen and where they shouldn't happen and, and what things the town uh, aspires to and what things the town really doesn't want to have happen in town. So the town plan is uh, a very important document from that standpoint. Uh, the town plan is also the primary uh, authority for um, the aspirations of the town in terms of getting grants. So if we write grants for things, uh, those people are looking at the town plan to see, uh, to, to see that the will of the town supports the intent of the grant. So. Yeah, so um, we are glad you're here. Some of us came a month early. <laughs> so excited to be here. Um, but the question we have is where do you see Callis in eight years, right? So a town plan is, is in effect for eight years. So you're kind of looking out to the future and trying to figure out where is it that we want to be. And these are some of the things that Gary was talking about, right? It's to put the power back in uh, local decision making, influence the state when it comes to regulatory proceedings, uh, allows us to get grants, right? Allows us to um, have a plan so that we can say, and with that plan, we need these grants, right? And um, other other funds for community development and housing. So that's that's kind of what the, the plan is for, and that's why we're here, to get what you guys, uh, what you think, what our neighbors think, what the community thinks about this next eight years and where we should be in the next um, those eight years. So these are the sections of the town plan. Um, now, I hope you all did your homework. We are going through each section laboriously and taking forever on it. So hopefully you're, that's why there's brownies. Um, <laughs> now, what we're really going to do is you can see we've put some post-its around the room. And we're going to go through here in a second and just give you a quick rundown of the sections. And then we're going to ask you your thoughts on the different sections. So, and we want to give you some visuals. Visuals always help, right? Make you think of some things. So we've got some of the different sections here um, that we were going to go through, right? So let's see. Uh, history and demographics. I don't know if you guys want to change our history or demographics. We'll go ahead and throw that up on one of the other issues if you'd like. But that is, that is the, like a, I think, the first part of the town plan, right? Just kind of going through the history. Usually it's the history and demographics. The last one was 2010 that we did. Yeah. Uh, 2020. And then, John, what is it? The American... Community AC. survey. I'm going yeah. to draw from that as much as possible, but the 2020 decennial is going to be the or really where all the stuff is. All right. So next we have land use development. Anybody want to talk about that slide real quick? So land use development. This is interestingly a map of our town of Callis, kind of centered in the red area is the historic overlay district. Anything orange is village district, yellow is rural residential, green is conserved. Uh, I can't remember what the pink was. I think pink that's is, pink River is, is town forest. Oh, the town forest. Oh, and, and probably oh, the pink is Malone's uh, resource recreational. There's the other pink is shoreland. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, the pink is shoreland. Sure. The dark and the other, pink, yeah. yeah, and the other green on the other side there. This green up here is, is Malone's property, which is uh, resource recreational. So 
what happens is this is this is land development. Do we want to change any villages? Do we want to change any rural residential? Do we, what are the things you might want to change? Okay. Housing. Everybody, we know that this is a big, big issue statewide, nationwide. And so how we, how we want to go forward with housing and how we do it smart and what, what we need to do when it comes to housing. Can't see it on there, but also like Airbnbs and right and those short term rentals and those kind of things. So those, those issues. Anybody feel free to jump in. Thank you. Okay, economic uh, development. <laughs> um, and, and you're gonna see that some of these topics interrelate with each other. Mm -hmm. um, Basically, we have three commercial areas in our town. That's where the three stores are. Um, and so the, the, the planning um, powers that we want us to look, is there any of the availability of growth or development? I personally like the word sustainability. But um, anyway, they go with economic development. So if you wanted to develop a new commercial center in the town, where would you put it? One of, one of the big issues at, at the last major rewrite of the town plan for economic development was uh, inter the development of access to the internet. And um, we've made tremendous strides in that regard, but there are still areas of town that are in, where the internet is not easily accessible. So. Next slide. So agriculture. This could also be economic development because your agriculture of Hooli Flats and Schoolhouse Farm are an economic resource to us. Um, if you decide how we want to do a plan, do you want to have more of these kinds of farms for future sustainability? Uh, if there were an economic downturn, how would Calus survive? Could I ask a quick question there? Or are you not? No, go, you can ask. Um, Pete's Greens, the former Laguerre's, mm -hmm. which is a huge farm. Yeah. Is that, um, is that a positive impact on our town in terms of don't um, know. the economy? I don't know. I can't answer that because of the way, but you're right. I forgot about that. They no longer that call that land um, Pete's Greens. What do they call it, John? SUNY something or another? I don't know the name of it now. But um, Laguerre Farm. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? Laguerre Farm. Laguerre, yeah. Um, and, and see, it used to be that they sold the vegetables there. Yeah. Now it's built, I think, basically for raising carrots. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, and, and things like that, which it goes to Pete's Greens, which, yeah, it, it diversifies out by the state. But I don't think we as a town get anything for that, other than what he pays in property tax. Countless people do, however, keep asking about corn and strawberries. No. <laughs> uh, flood resilience. Um, I can say that uh, Cal's has a great flood um, floodplain ordinance. It is up to snuff. I've looked it over. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we also, you know, we have river corridors, um, everything. I'd say, like, in terms of regulations, we're good. Uh, but we all know there's a lot, you know, when it floods, there's a lot of damages to the roads. I know Curtis Pond, the dam there is a hot topic that probably could fill up an entire town plan on its own. Um, so, you know, there's all things to think about in the future. And I think we had thought about putting the emergency management, um, the new emergency management under the flood resilience possibly. I don't know that mm -hmm. that's something new. Okay, next one. Natural resources and conservation. Very important for our town. Uh, how do we preserve the natural resources that we have uh, and working with the conservation commission? Um, where, where do we conserve? And there's a natural, uh, there's a natural, I don't want to call it conflict, but there's a natural uh, where do you develop and conserve? And, and we have so much land that is there, and we really have very little developable land. So it's, it's, it's really an interesting, um, I don't want to, uh, dilemma, I guess. Anyway, yeah. here we go. <laughs> Our historic sites, um, 
if you've seen the new Memorial Hall, this was uh, this is an older pi picture, right? It was uh, last spring, maybe. I'm mm -hmm. trying to think. Cause, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, it's anyway. Yeah, there are historic sites, Old West Church. What do you want to do to keep those, and how do you want to keep them? What do we want to do with municipal services? Uh, we've already heard that the town office is small. Are you going to rebuild it? What are we going to do with the garage? Is there any way that we can get back to using the town hall? I mean, the picture on the left is where old, um, the uh, script of Old Town was being played that day. <laughs> and uh, the group was, was meeting there and upstairs, and you could look out and see so it would be nice to have certain nice things there. <laughs> Energy is a big one. Um, I, so I made a lot of these slides and I had help making them look pretty for my partner, but I will say, don't worry, that is a stock image of solar panels <laughs> um, and the windmill. <laughs> it is, I don't know where it is. It's not in Cali. <laughs> Probably not even in Vermont. So um, it's just supposed to, you know, get you um, thinking and um, kind of rile you up and get your creative juices flowing while, before we start this. And, and actually what we have in the current town plan states that, um, that basically our solar has to be within the confines of the um, house that you're at or the property that you're at. Um, we have not, uh, we don't have a lot of big uh, overextended solar fields. Um, um, what you want to do with um, electrical vehicles and, and all of that, that's um, education for updating your house if you want to have energy efficiency and how do you want to go about doing that. Um, that's part of all of energy. So transportation is the same thing with municipal services, right? right. Yeah, same thing. And, and I mean, they, they kind of tie in. Um, we don't really have public transportation. At uh, one time, um, just, just sharing, we had an energy, start of an energy committee and we were looking at where to put a park and ride and we couldn't find a place for a park and ride. So the rural transportation, uh, RTC bus goes, does it still stop at the post office? It used to. It was, but I think they might have changed it. They probably changed it mm -hmm. um, because they only had one trip in and one trip back mm -hmm. into Morrisville. Um, so if you want to have affordable housing, I mean, I'm just putting this out as you just think about it. If you want to have affordable housing, people have to work somewhere and they have to drive. And I think in the last demographics, we saw that almost every house or every property owner has at least two cars. So if you build affordable housing and you put up eight houses, are you going to have to put 16 parking lots or spaces for 16 cars? Mm -hmm. How do you want to not do that? Transportation. Okay. I mean, these are, all, these are all the interrelated issues to think about. <laughs> Kari, well, you can talk to yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> So Kari Bradley, I'm not on the commission, but I've volunteered to help out with the education chapter as a longtime school board member. and. Uh, the district, of course, is a separate municipality at this point, uh, but we happen to be doing a strategic planning process right now in the final stages. We have some draft goals and action steps, and we're obviously at a, a crossroads with education. How are we going to maintain a, a sustainable educational system um, throughout the community is a, is a big, big question. and. Uh, the other thing I mentioned is that also required in this part is early childhood uh, child care. Um, so that's something that we should talk about as well. Recreation and arts. Yeah, so there's a, there's a lot of things um, in the community when it comes to recreation and arts. I love the trails um, and all the different things that we have and um, that's available to us. So how do we want to continue to promote that? Right, how do we want to continue to sustain it um, and help it grow in, in not just recreation, but in the arts um, and in all of those fields? Because we have great things to begin with, so how do we continue to support it? And in what ways does the town um, really support recreation in the arts? 
Okay, you can, we can actually go all the way back okay. to the one that just lists everything. So this is when we wanted to give you some time to talk to each other, grab some post-it notes, something to write with, and we've put the major um, sections of the town plan on the wall. We want to hear what you think, right? So what, what ideas do you have? Um, what, what questions even do you have, right? So we wanted to just give you some time to talk to one another, put those things up, and then we'll come back and we will kind of go through them and we'll talk about it. And we'll see what questions you do have. Um, we're here to listen. We're not here to give the ideas. We want to hear your ideas. And so um, we want to give you some time. So take a post-it note and a pencil, go around. What things do you, do you think of, right? What, what do you want to see in recreations and arts and transportation, economic development? What do you want to see? What should we be doing as we write a plan? All right, what kind of things should we be doing? And what you might want to think of eight years from now. Yeah. Oh. What do you want Callis to look like? Um, and then for people on Zoom, um, yes. you can just shoot those in the chat if you want, um, and I'm monitoring it, so I can I can even write it on a sticky note if you want, and then put it up on the board for you. That could be fun for me. Yeah. It's, like, it's, <laughs> it's like you're here. <laughs> it's like you're in the room. So we'll just give you a few minutes. Uh, 10, 15, so, yes, go ahead. I'm, I'm wondering if we know what Callus demographics are. Are we, in fact, um, how old are we, you know? Are we mostly old people? Yes. Um, <laughs> it's like over 50% <laughs> over the age of 65. Over 50% over the age of 65. Over 50%. Yeah. Oh yeah. So we got a lot of big houses for all those old people. <laughs> and when if us, all of us decide to uh, have poor health all of a sudden at the same time, yeah. is there a place here in town where we mm -hmm. might want some kind of co-generational housing? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. And if there's something that doesn't look like it fits or just feel like it fits, it we, we put the other one. Like just we want to hear it, right? Quick question. So when Jan was preparing for this and asking for these supplies, yeah. she asked for specifically different color sticky mm -hmm. notes. Is there a meaning to the color of the sticky notes? I think we've, we've gone away from that. Just, okay. put, them, just put them where you want. Okay, okay. Thank you. What, what's going to happen is wherever the most post-it notes go, might yeah. tell us what the priority should I was be. Gonna, I was just going to point that out. Like, you know, if no one puts anything under transportation, it's not that it's not something we're not going to talk about, but it, you know, it's not a, a top huge priority, right? So this will help us too, just visually, we can see it. If there's one poor little lonely post-it note on transportation, we know that's not necessarily a priority. Still something we're going to talk about, but not necessarily one of our top priorities. But yeah, we're getting by with the... Could it could be something that we have questions about? It could be. Yeah, it could be. It could just be that people haven't thought about it. We're going to go around and we'll go back again. And the question. And, you and know see what? if there's questions. You could ask. You can even put it in as a question. Yeah, if you have a question about one of the sections, go ahead and throw it on a post it. Mm -hmm. If you have a question that you want to remain anonymous, then you can just put it up there. <laughs> 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 you're, also, you're also encouraged. And uh, you're encouraged to ask questions so that everybody can be stimulated by that. Fletcher? Um, so I, I tried to inhale the town plan from 2016 this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I went through 75 pages. Anyway, I blasted through the last way. 75. <laughs> but I, one statistic that stuck out to me in, in, con in contrast to what was just said, um, it said as of 2010, the median age was 46, oh. but 88% of the population of Calus was 60 was under 65. Yeah. And somebody just said we're I'm 50, sure it's at least 50% over 65. It's not much different. Oh, really? Yeah. When I looked at it, that's what I, I don't know. That's what I saw. I know I saw. Vermont is an aging state, but I thought that that was interesting that 88% was under 65 in 2010. Well, how many people in this room have turned 65 true. since well, that would be a fortune? <laughs> <laughs> <Yes. laughs> <Yes. laughs> exactly. That's why I'm kind of shocked that all over 50% are over 65 now. That's a fair question, because demographics, too, I mean, these, these guys all know when you build a plan, though, that makes it different. I have four kids under the age of 12. Yay! Right. <laughs> That's what Cat Fair said, too. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> she said, she said something to me. She goes, you look like a tax base. Um, <laughs> but that does, that brings a push-pull as well, right? You've got the, the services and the things needed for an, for an aging population, while at the same time you've got a, a whole other section. You know, I look at it and go, where do my kids play basketball? Yeah. In, you know what I mean? So they're, they're totally different things. So it does have a push-pull aspect to it. Yeah. It's sort of along the same lines. I have a question about where, what this meeting, um, what kind of role it plays in, or what happens after here when I look around the room and I think about what, who's represented here in the room, and are we, we are clearly not a, a great cross-section of the town here. I mean, you, everyone was invited, right. but the question is, are we making um, are we the only people who are going to weigh in? I, I know that people will be invited to call you or write to you or whatever, but how aggressive must we be as a whole community across all of our cultural divides to make sure that we're getting what we want, that yeah. we're all getting what we want? We, um, we have, uh, as a, the Planning Commission has really four primary sources of guidance for what goes into the town plan. Uh, obviously, it's our own opinion and uh, as you, you know we all live here and we all look around and we're and we particularly are uh, are um, intent on uh, reflecting all of those different things you know we have to look at economic development we can't just say oh we want to conserve everything um, so that's a that's a big piece of it what goes on with the town committees is a big piece of, of we will we will solicit in, uh, information and 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 gather uh, opinions and and uh, needs from all of the town commissions and and committees. Um, the, you guys, you know, this is really you're absolutely right. People who are silent all the time, they don't they don't weigh in with as much authority as people who uh, who participate. And this is one very important piece of participation. And we also are directed by the state. Uh, a lot of the elements in the town plan are things that are mandated. So, um, you know, that's 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 where that's how we form our our guidance. Well, one one question I have too is that I, that there is, and this is maybe lots of water under the bridge, and I certainly wasn't knowing this until last week. But there are there's grant money for a sort of a facilitated process to get more, to, to recruit people from all parts of our town to come together and weigh in. And that's a very hard process to get people to come to a meeting. It's also it's, a hard process to get the grants. I mean, oh, is it? it, it I mean, it, it's somewhat difficult because you have to, I did ask the rural development and I still have yet to get a comment back. Mm -hmm. um, and because I wanted rural development to, to, to do, a, a, they do three town meetings, and Plainfield had it, Marshfield had it, um, and there's some other other groups who do facilitating. But we had to get started. If yeah. we were to, to have asked for a grant, then it would have taken time to get the money applied, and then to do it, and they would have been spending all of this year doing that, and we have to have the town plan done by the yeah. end of the okay. year. Yeah. I think in terms of process, we, we've talked about having other town meetings or other just interested party meetings. Or surveys. We've, yeah, or yeah, surveys. We've, we've talked about doing surveys. We've talked about um, going to some of the groups, Friends of Callis, some mm -hmm. of the different things, and getting their input. So yeah, I mean, you're right. We need to try and get as much of the input as possible. Because you're right, it's, sometimes it's always the same people that will show up to stuff. Right. This uh, is literally the same people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the usual suspects. <laughs> right, and so we, we do need to do that. We've had conversations. I think our idea was to have one to see where we were, right. and then to go from there and go, okay, now we need to now we need to do X. Right. right? Like okay. we, we've debated even yeah. back and forth. Do we have it in the different the different hamlets and the different right. places, right? Do we do them all here? Like we've talked about that, but we wanted to have one to Jan's point to get the process started. Okay. I'm new to it too. Like I, I, 
I know I'm supposed to like write parts and I haven't done any of it because I wanted to wait until I hear things, mm -hmm. right? And so I think that's what we're that's what we're doing. But your point is not lost. We do need to make sure that we get I and, mean, and, if, that and if you wanted to be a survey taker for the planning commission, we would love it. <laughs> I mean, I was actually thinking more like, you know, pie breakfast at the school or spaghetti, food, 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 <laughs> free food. Is it a free food and conversation? Huh? Yes. Well, the yeah. planning commission is going to be working on this for the next six months. Six months. Right? And we yeah. meet twice a month and there's food. <laughs> <laughs> there always is food. Okay, yeah, Gary <laughs> always brings us things. <laughs> and there is, by the way, food over there. So stand up, start talking. And yeah, so take some time, grab some post notes, talk to each other, and let's see what we can get. We'll give you some time to, to just think about it. And give us your thoughts. I'm distracted by the fact that there are birds. Tobin, you're allowed to have another. <laughs> Stop talking. There are brownies. <laughs> Did you? No, that, uh, that's my wife. My wife. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. I looked at the one this data. I have to double check, but it's incredible. Yes. How are we? Well, no. Okay. According to the Meredith Community Survey, it says 20%, 20.1% is 65 or older. But I remember when I looked at the 2010 census, I like joined all the tables. Or sorry, no, no, 2020 census. Okay. But I will. I will. I don't know if I will be able to join all the tables. Yeah. I thought it was, it was like 50% of the but I guess not. I was like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So, yeah, so you're right there. Yep. Right. That's what I thought, but apparently I'm going to. The double check one
it. Yeah. 
an issue that they were Oh, yeah. We got to talk about John was to talk about Yeah. so excited. Thank you for uh, supporting us, uh, talking to me, and supporting our idea. He moves fast. Oh, does he? Yes, I'm really surprised. He's thinking of it. Where's I know some of the other people like Stephanie? When did the dam <laughs> Sounds like it'd be kind of hard to accommodate yeah. yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Because, you know, well, our original right. exactly. idea was to yeah. go from Wood yeah. and yeah. up to Carabrook. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 Uh, because that's the corner. Yeah. So, and up there, there's all sorts of really nice yeah. work. Yeah. And yeah. that's where the, the black ash yeah. and the orchids. Yes. Um, the snowmobile tree is about to go up the hill um, toward Hel where it goes up the hill toward Helmand. Yeah. You know that. And so it's going to be right at the bottom. Yeah. Oh, I see.
and the lesson until it's usually there to have a project by versus
No, it's for ideas. Ideas. that you have of the Planning Commission. And then the idea is we take some time for some questions and then we want you to go back and now go around and read everybody's. So I go through and sort of read what you see and now just something else come to mind and you go, oh yeah, that's one I want to add, right? Because you saw somebody else's comments. Um, but what specific questions do you have that we can, we can answer if you have them? Yes, ma'am. So one thing that came up when I was talking to people is compared with the last plan, how many things didn't come to fruition or didn't even get off the ground? Um, which I, I know it's 175 pages of planning, like that's fine. But is part of this process figuring out ways to follow through and line up folks, or is this just are we doing the same way we did last time? We're made, like. No, we are not doing it the same way. Like I said, ask Harry. His, his, his primary thing was when we, in this last one, we were sort of instructed to do that. Here's your goal, objective, date. You're going to get it done by, 
I think Gary and a few of the others have discussed, you don't put the date down. In other words, you, you say this is the goal and the objective and the tools that we're going to use. Um, in looking at other towns, town plan, what they did is they synthesized all of this into the top 10 priorities that they would do for the next eight mm -hmm. years. And that's kind of what I think I was hoping we could try to do here. Mm -hmm at least so that when they get going, we know what the priorities are going to be. Um, how that is written out in terms of, um, but you're right, you know, we had the best commission to work on the, on the town plan was, was the Conservation Commission, really, because they were after, here's what I'm going to do out of the town plan. And then... I'll <laughs> just I, I, say that. I, I went through and looked at all the things that, that we, we were supposed didn't to do, do and I, we yeah. even thought about maybe 10 percent of them. Right, I, I understand. I understand. And the planning commission had the same same thing. Although we did do river corridor, we did do a few other things that affected erosion control in our in our new regulations. So there were certain things that the new regulations did address. And that, I, I'll be honest with you, it was one of the first meetings. I think the first meeting I was at. That was a question I asked: it, Have we evaluated? Like the actions, to, I mean, no, you know, I mean, there's just, there's a lot. There's a lot and you can, you can also box yourself in, right? When you say we're going to do X by X and are you really going to do X by X, right? And so, I, I, yeah, I, that was my first question was, have we evaluated this? And the answer was, was no. So I think some of it's just the voluminous nature of the last town plan. It's a, it's a large Magna Carta document. Anyway, and, the, and, the, and the Planning Commission, through a, through a lot of this time, the Planning Commission was a lot smaller than what you see up here today. And we just didn't have, we didn't have the people to do it. We had a huge amount of work to do and not very many hands. Well, we're in better shape now than we were then. We could be in better shape still. I'll, I'll get a chair if anybody wants to. <laughs> Is a theme for the last year. Uh, you raised the question of the size of the, the old town plan. I was just curious if you guys had had any opportunity or saw any, any need or interest in surveying, just looking at, at other comparable sort of rural towns to see just what the size of their plans are. We look at the other scope. plans all the time. Yeah. Do you, you have a desire kind of on the high side for no, volume? No. Average. Yeah. Well. Woodbury, Woodbury, smaller town, just did theirs, and actually the Regional Planning Commission did, did it for them, kind of, and they were at a hundred and something pages. Um, the smallest town plan I've ever seen, interestingly enough, is Berlin, and that's because they had it in a big thing, in, 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 open this way. They had a lot of maps interspersed. They had it very well put together. They obviously paid a consultant to do that work. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the smallest one I saw, and that were at 80, 80 pages or so. I mean, I think, I think the goal would be to have a manageable town plan that is something that we can actually try to achieve, right? As opposed to just a huge document that, you know, we put together. Like, the idea is you want to get these things that was Gary put earlier was aspirational. Well, aspirations are only so good if you can do anything about them, right? Yeah, but I think also that there's something, there seems to be value in having the whole opus um, because it represents it represents the, 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 yep. the will of the people, hopefully, and right. then you pick 10 to prioritize or whatever, but yeah. I like the idea that in 20 years' time, we can look back and say, this is what we were valuing then. Mm. So yeah, I, I, do, I, do, I do agree with that. I think it's more the action steps. Yeah. In this last one, there were just so many. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to do these things. Right. But I, I agree. Yeah, you want to be able, to, for historical purposes, to go back and go, oh, wow, yeah, 10 years ago, this is what we were, we stood for. This right. is what we wanted. So appreciate it. Thank you. Well, one of the things though, that strikes me is that even as you're talking about us going around and reading all these things, that another thing that would be useful would be, in a sense, to talk about what were all of the unfulfilled goals from last time. So what are we perhaps not thinking about right now that uh, eight years ago us did think of? That's a fair question. I don't, that one I don't have an answer to. But yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's fair. You know, again, an evaluation of the plan, right? And go, well, what didn't we get done? 
Right. And maybe what is the reason we didn't get that done? Right. Was it because right. the board was small and we couldn't just get it done? Or was it it was too lofty of a goal? Or was it not the right goal like we thought it was, but then we got into it and it wasn't? Like, I think evaluating why things didn't happen is a good. Yeah, yeah we'll leave you. See, Jan's right. But I think you know, good, some things yeah. take a long time. How long has it taken the Curtis Pond group? Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> and then, then you have setbacks and you have to go back and start over again. I mean, really, it's not, it's just. Yeah. A big deal. Sisyphus. Any other questions or comments right now? Not necessarily about the individual things, but maybe the whole process. Anything that we can You know, address? we have taken really good care of our town buildings. They're all mm -hmm. rehabbed. We have a town office that we never had before, mm -hmm. and it's paid off at the end of the year. Those are all big things. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think those are a lot of things to be proud of. Yeah. I'm not suggesting other problems. Yeah, no, 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 I'm, I'm giving examples. Yes, oh, yes, absolutely. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Pleasure, right? Yeah. Um, I was, well, actually, I did have, when I was looking through it this morning, I, I, was, I was having these Sorry. questions, which I kind of posted intermittently yeah. there, but um, some things just came to mind, like, has if anybody on the panel there knows has local employment increased since the last town plan, or is it about the same? Um, it, there's a goal for 60% renewable energy in the town. I'm wondering if that's happening. Or, 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 not. Well, these, I, I'm just wondering if you all, you know, because obviously it's aspirational, and you want to say, okay, how, what's our progress, or did we actually slip back? Um, Food productions and food security, are we doing better with that? Uh, that's obviously a really big thing. Um, energy efficient buildings or energy efficiency within buildings and um, obviously high speed communication, it sounds like we've made good headway with that, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. recently. Yeah. So I, any of those other topics that, that just kind of came so to mind? On that one topic about solar, um, there, there is an energy map which tells you how many, uh, where the solar locations are and how many there are. Um, regional, Central Vermont Regional will show us all of that. I mean, and, and, and we get in. And we can compare what we had in 2016 to what we have today in 2024. Um, and I don't know what that difference is, but that can be definitely compared, and that would be an interesting thing to put into the next town. This is what we achieved, or what the town mm -hmm. accomplished was an increase in X, Y, Z, yeah. which you know can can be a positive. Um, that I don't know how we can measure energy efficiency of buildings because we don't know how many people have done better insulation, who maybe applied with Efficiency Vermont and did whatever they did, yeah, or how many people yeah. actually renovate, retrofitted, yeah. retrofitted a house, or none of us, I mean, we don't keep track of that really unless, <laughs> unless eventually the listers go around and there's a, 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 a different application. So when the reappraisal of our properties come, that's when you're going to know for sure what I think happened, whether there's a new building or a, a new energy efficiency in an old building and all of that. Right now, an energy efficient building has a larger, a bigger fair market value, so it's taxed more. So, uh -huh. yeah, so yeah, the more <laughs> the, more is, uh, the more we're going to assess its value. And the building we're in is an example of it. Yes. Right? This is well insulated. Yeah. yeah. Since that report, but it's, we don't pay taxes on it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, so I think we're all thinking about sustainability, but I don't even think we have a good definition of what it means for a town. What is sustainability for a town? Um, and, and so it's hard to work toward that. If we have such a goal like that, what does it really mean? So if you can. Uh, break that down into components, then it would be easier to set specific 
objectives that we could then uh, work on. Uh, we all care about it. We right. just don't all agree about what or know what it is. What does it mean yeah. for us as yeah. a town? Yeah, as a town. Yeah. Right. That's a fair question. A great yeah. idea. And also goes into the, like we've talked about in meetings, just vision in general. Like what is the vision? And I think that 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 leads to that. We have a vision, and then it comes to these other points, which we need to define, mm -hmm. right? We need to say this is what it means to us, and then here's what we're going to do about it. Yeah. Which kind of might get into your yeah. point too, like. This is what we're saying we stand for, mm -hmm. right? Directly, like we, we believe in this and we're going to do these things to get there. Mm -hmm. So that's that's good. Well, mm -hmm. something we need to take. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Yeah, go ahead. The um, categories, the sections of the town plan, where do those come from? Is that somehow from the state or is that like inherited? Is it? State yeah. statute? Do you want to flip to the last uh, couple slides just so you, you can, can show everybody? We, will have, we won't read them to you. But, and they yeah. don't have to necessarily be in sections, but the state does require us to address certain issues. Um, at the very end of the PowerPoint, Kari, I think we have two slides that show the, um, the statutory requirements. Oh, yeah. yeah. So these are the planning goals. But I think it's a back one, which is the There's sections. one more. Oh, one, one more after. That, yeah. It's after. Uh, must include mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the number citation is supposed to be updated. Um, of where this is all from. Right. So that's what's got to be in our town plan um, by statute. So that's what has to be by statute. And the previous slide where it said the goals, when a town plan is when a town plan is reviewed by the regional planning commission, that also has to meet these goals. So the interspersion between, and that's also a state statute. So that tells you how how restricted in some ways we are. But just counterpoint, I think there are a lot of really good ideas and concepts here that it's good to help us focus the discussion uh, for purposes of the town plan. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that's where these Come categories on. came from, and like the table of contents of the plan, that's where it comes from. State statute. It, um, it, it also occurs to me that there, that many of the things we want are incompatible, just as you said. <laughs> I said <this> so. <laughs> well, they're, they're incompatible. So, yes. for example, uh, many of the things that we would like to see come from growth, mm -hmm. but we also know that growth produces a lot of problems, and growth is not a model we want to keep adopting because we got to somehow figure out how to have good things without the having to grow. Okay, so on that, let me just address what a couple people in other town plans have done. You hit, hit it head on. We are going to talk about economic development, but this town cannot do it for thus and so reasons. And so if you address it that way, and, and I, was on a, I was on the committee that evaluated municipal plans. So I could see this. And it's not that you have to say you're going to have it. It's that it's going to say, we know we, we're told we should have it, but we can't do it. Mm -hmm. Woodbury didn't do a lot of things. They, they acknowledged they can't do a lot. Same thing with housing. Yes. I can't do X, Y, Z. Yes. Here's why, as long as you document why. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I haven't heard anyone address affordability. <laughs> and that's basically why I'm here. <laughs> okay. I think affordability comes up, or at least when I was perusing the, the things, it comes up in sort of little ways in all of these different places. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's sort of in, I don't know, I, I notice it a lot in housing and right. yeah. transportation. Transportation. Education. Yeah. Education, yeah, right. I think. <laughs> Providing the education and making it still right. affordable for, mm -hmm. for us, yeah. Well, That's I, a good point. Go I live on Social Security, mm -hmm. basically. And I'm sure there's a lot of other people like me here. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I mean, I'm, mm -hmm. I sold some land December of 2022. Mm -hmm. I've got another land sale mm -hmm. um, in the works. And I've got a third piece that I'm working on selling. And this is the only way I can survive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is the selling point, yeah. 
That's, I mean, so. And I'm actually, I, I'm, my efforts here are to be, uh, to be able to live on my income. I'm, I'm putting in a mobile home and eventually tearing down my big old house because it's just unaffordable mm -hmm. to live in it. It's interesting because we talk about affordability and we talk about it in things like this, but not just living. Individuals, <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, as individuals living. Like this is, as the town, how do we make it affordable for housing? And, but maybe as individuals, how do we work to make things affordable as well? Yeah. Well, Anita, can I ask a question? This is kind of a what if question, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, but <laughs> some of us are at an age we're going to have the same question. If there were a Oh, senior center type of housing where there would be maybe four or five units strictly f that were affordable. Would you move to that? No. No. Okay. <laughs> I mean, as a last resort. Okay. But, uh, okay. This year, I love where I am. And I okay. Okay. <laughs> and I think that's part of um, some of this issue about <coughs> of building houses. People like their land, and mm -hmm. to ask them to give out three acres to put in a housing unit or something, they aren't, they aren't going to do it. It's, it, it's, it, it's historically theirs, and so it, it, that's been part of the issue um, in terms of land. The two pieces that I saw, one is not suitable for housing, the other the you know, new owner doesn't plan on putting a house on it, but this third section that I, I'm looking to sell this year is to a family who want to put a house on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's okay, because that's income to the town. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is part of, right, the, like, growth does keep costs down because it means that it's a bigger tax base. And that that kind it of can and it can't, depends on who well, ends up moving in. And, and growth up to what point? Yeah. It starts to then increase infrastructure needs. Exactly. Then it right. get to it. But yeah, growth just in general. Like, it's almost like there's a, a benchmark, mm -hmm. right? Like growth up to here will be fine. But once we get that, then the school has to get bigger. Yeah. Right. Or we now exactly. need a town-wide set, you know, like whatever that is. Yeah, then it becomes an issue. And, and also you want to think about if, if the town's budget because of the cost increases of whatever it is to maintain the town has to go up, then do you need to have development go up equally so that your tax rate stays the same? I mean, so it's kind of an interplay between, <laughs> between the development, the budget, and the tax rate. Yep. And, and just like they said, if you have more development, you're going to have more infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to have greater costs. And how are you going to manage to do that? So it's a balancing act. Are we going to together? I mean, this sounds epic, but are, are, are is the are we going to talk about these different yeah. things? Oh, we are. Okay. That was the, that was the idea. Yeah. We'll we'll do, give you a few minutes to go back around and just review and look at it, and then come back and okay. talk about what's on there. That might we'll be a good time too. To yeah, and we'll read them too. Yeah. So we, that, this might be a good time to do that. Yeah. Let's just take a few minutes and just look at what everybody else has written, what else is okay. and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the issues themselves. Uh, well, you know what, Tobin? I only have so high of expectations. <laughs> oh. well, yeah, I mean, when, you know, I feel like also that um, there have to be a sense for environmental reasons. Like, 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 and people writing on it, because I think it gets lost in the area. Do you remember that was written? Yeah. I, I don't think anybody saw it. Jan, is that supposed to be one of the land use? Land use? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, it sense for environmental reasons. I don't think anybody saw it. We didn't move one up because I don't know why we did Yeah. I can put it onto the other one. For doing this. Yeah, yeah. Put that one over there. But it's, well, I, I, I just, I've seen this, and I don't think anybody saw it. No, I think somebody else wrote that. Yeah, right. We need to find it. So maybe that means because they think there's an issue there. So maybe. So why don't I tear it off and put it on the wall? Yeah, we should do that. Put it up here. So maybe on this wall. I just put these pallets. Yeah. There's room on that wall right over there. Yeah. Yeah. No. 
that we hadn't put it up there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Okay. Which is fair. It's so much less far than it did even it's 10 like years ago. Groceries. Groceries. Groceries have gone up 25% on average since yeah. the <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, there's no every single My house is there. It's already. So let's just put them up. It's Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
so no, 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 no. <laughs> that was just what she wanted. So I understand it would take a lot. And it would really but there's, you know, they have to. I see that people. Well, there's someone who made things look really good. because one, 30 minutes, it'll be real easy to get down rabbit holes, right? And into the very, the, the details of everything. And I don't, we don't think that's where we're at yet, right? It's just this first meeting to try and understand what priorities are. Um, let's just go there first. I will open up a pub in the old cafe that's in my house. <laughs> Town plan. <laughs> and it's done already. And that's it. You um, did have a liquor license. <laughs> well, I see, I don't know. I know it was permitted as a cafe, but I don't know what. But I have the whole kitchen. Yes. And as I told somebody, my father is a chef. He's a classically trained chef and he, he lives in the cottage that's there. Ooh. So well, we just have to figure that out. You could have someone to drive people home. We could. <laughs> <laughs> that's what my mother's for. <laughs> that's what we need so, the bus for. Yes. Anyway, so just if anybody wants to start, we just wanted to hear what you think the priorities are, right? And just where we think we should be taking this plan. Yes. More vibrant villages, more affordable housing in villages, thoughtfully designed villages that we who are already here can get behind and are part of the development of, and then the pub. The pub. <laughs> East Callas, we need some love. We need some love in East Callas. Yes. So the pub in East Callas is, is a very big priority of mine. The heck with the store, we'll put a pub in. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. That's, okay, I, yeah, the vibrant villages and having that be a base. Okay, anybody else, a priority that you took away even, or something that you took away just from reading everybody else's thoughts? It's a priority. I just want to counter a question. Please go ahead. How, do you, how would you make them vibrant? I mean, this is the thing, is every time we have this conversation about, boy, wouldn't it be great to have a pub here, or wouldn't it be great if, you know, we could have more young families living in the village or whatever, and everybody just says, oh, septic. And then like, we can't stop there anymore. Like, we have yeah. to figure it out. You know, how do we get more young people into starter places 
that are <coughs> that, that are like designed in the way we want them to be okay. yeah. in villages. Okay. So okay. let me let me ask one other question and then I will shut my mouth. <laughs> um, <laughs> would you be willing as a town to hire a professional civil engineer or landscape architect to really develop a town-wide plan? More yeah. like a physical yeah. town-wide plan? Something like that. Yeah. Depending yeah. on what we with us. Not septic. So right. our, right. our, so we, we get to weigh in. But yeah, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's a professional who designs a town layout. Oh, yeah. Can you put put a dollar number on that? I can't. <laughs> you, you would have to do it the uh, grant feasibility, then the three steps of a grant. But but I think mm -hmm. I mean if people are looking at what to do with village centers, our village centers today are in River Corridor. Sorry, we can't develop there. Mm -hmm. So where are we going to develop? Then how do we plan? We're not professional planners. We're not professional landscapers, we're whatever, land developers, um, you know, but if you hire a professional landscape architect or a civil engineer who could do that, um, there's a possibility that an overall town plan, East Middlebury did an overall town plan. I think that one of the challenges with East Calus, I was the person who put up the, I feel like East Calus is a place that can use development both in terms of housing and in terms of uh, a couple of businesses mm -hmm. um, possibility. But one of the real, uh, uh, you know, and, and it was, that was what it was in the 19th century. It was mm -hmm. yeah. a very bustling place, far more yeah. than it is now. One of the t total barriers to that is the traffic pattern. Mm -hmm. That is to say, it doesn't, it feels sundered by the road because practically you know that everyone is going down that road at 50 miles per hour through that town center and there's a constant like there aren't uh there aren't sidewalks and it changes the way that that area can be used and that the way that we conceive of that area simply the fact of the, the way the traffic moves through there and if you look at the 19th century that's doable. photograph right and it's doable that's to say doable. like you start to say like what would this look like if we had yeah. ways of traffic on that's what danville you know. used to look like right yeah. right yeah. right, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. exactly yeah. right and danville yeah. has managed to somehow come together in that yeah. way yeah yeah, yeah. And, and the state has uh, traffic uh, transportation grants available for designated village centers and i think east montpelier did that a while back as well to get sidewalks in their little village area yeah. Um, although it's still kind of a thoroughfare. <laughs> yeah. But still, it would be like it would feel very different than if you felt like you could stick a couple of, you know, uh, four unit or five unit places mm -hmm. along the road there, where frankly there were always uh, tenements, you know, um, and for a factory housing, you know, in the mid 19th century. Maybe some yeah. traffic calming or something. Yeah. I think 35 down to 25 would make a big difference. Yeah. yeah. If people would, if especially people would if follow people it. Would I mean, there it. has to be a physical <laughs> way to slow people. Yeah, so yeah. they're doing 45 and 35 now, so bring it down to 25. Maybe you'll get 35. But, but yeah, some, some narrowing down that sort of makes people mm -hmm. feel mm -hmm. like slowing like down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even sidewalks do that. Yes. Yeah. You get a curb and yeah. then you get your right like Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think Danville has some fences or. Yeah, they've got fences, they put a little eyes yeah, in the Yeah, medians. Medians are the oh, yeah. the medians. Yeah. Slow. yeah. The it snow, seems like they're cheap over there. Snowplow trucks hate it, but, oh, but uh, right. it does. Mm -hmm. Snowplow trucks. Mm -hmm. snow, oh, snow yeah. oh. Yeah. yeah. They hate, they hate those little. Mm -hmm. Of course they do. Road. So what? <laughs> but <laughs> but, um, but they do, they're effective. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't the state snowplow road? Ridiculous. But it works. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it town does. Oh, the town does. Yeah. But the problem with 14 is that that is a state road. Right. So everything is covered by the state. Doesn't the town plow it in the village? No. 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 State. The state. The state. Is the right big through. orange trucks go okay. okay. Oh, so the it's fine. The town is below the speed limit, right? Yeah. 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 They need yes. to approve it. Yeah, they yeah. Mm. But the trucks won't follow that. I mean, we have, we have at, at the, each end of East Callis, we have those. Uh, <laughs> Solar radar, radar, speed, radar thing. Yeah. Half the time they don't work, and then when they do work, the trucks just—I mean—they have to barrel up that that hill, and they they're going 40, 45 through the center of East Callis, and they're doing 60 by my house, which yeah. is a mile it's, it, And it's not just the trucks. 
that is, yeah. no, it isn't just the trucks. <laughs> but true. but the trucks and the granite trucks that go along 14 is that's that's the problem with the east. It's just what Tobin said. It, mm -hmm. That's the traffic pattern. It's too bad that we couldn't have kept the old road going wherever it was <laughs> uh, historically, and and then East Callis Village could have been. Kept well, I think the interesting thing about the conversation is is that vibrant villages they're also very different, right? The issues that say Adamant or, or Maple Corner are gonna have are different than an East Callis issue, right? Like there's gonna be two different issues, so we almost have to come up with, we, yes, we want vibrant villages, but each plan, yeah. even yeah. mini plan for those right. are gonna be different. And that's what you're saying, different. you say yeah. hiring a, an engineer, civil engineer, whatever, it's, it's deeply important that the communication be excellent mm -hmm. and that the people who are already living in these villages um, are very instrumental in the development of that design. Right. Um, in each of those three different cases. Yeah. And also that the happening of this make it m easier to stay and not harder. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's a good point. A rotary that goes by the church. Uh, anybody else priorities that they see or that they want to just mention to us? I love that. Anybody? No? What? Is there something that stood out to you as you looked through them? Was, it, was, there, was there a theme? Was there like... Housing has a lot. <laughs> was there was there anything that was like, yeah, everybody's saying roughly the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Is there something particular? Yeah, to you. Oh, one thing I noticed is just a lot of people commented on the volunteerism situation. Mm -hmm. A lot of the volunteers who have done a lot for this town are tired of it. They've been doing yeah. it for years and years and they want the younger folks to step up, except yeah. there's not a lot of younger folks to step up and how do we do that? And then another thing I've heard kind of correlating with that is people Younger people who grew up here say, we used to have this, we used to have these dinners and these dances and these parades, and why don't any of those things happen anymore? But they're, you know, it's how do we make that happen? How do we get people involved emotionally enough to do the, the legwork behind all these things that do help us come together and meet people we don't know and see people we haven't seen in a long time? Like, I, the amount of joy I've seen in the East Callis Pollock since we started it, like, I was really worried it was not going to go well, and it was going to be five people, but people who hadn't talked to each other in years, even though they all live within a few miles of each other, like, it was such an easy thing to put together, yeah. and I want to convey to more people that I know who are afraid to take the leap, like, it's, it could be very simple, but mm -hmm. that's how we build those relationships, that's how we get people volunteering for things, that's how a lot of those little things snowball into bigger things. Yeah. And I don't know who it was, maybe it was you. There's two post-its on municipal services, and it was about that. It was like somebody wrote that, you know, it's a citizen-based government, and we need people to do that. And, and when you get too far away from it, it's taking away a reason for people to be neighbors to each other, right? Like, so I think that that's a, it's not a tangible thing, too, that I yeah. think is interesting in a town plan, right? You're talking about something more visionary and getting more volunteers as opposed to build the roads this way. And do right. It's a it's a it's a it's a people thing, and mm -hmm. I and I like that. So, thank but you. Some people just plain aren't interested in participating in anything. It's not true. Or not. I was going to say it's not true. You're not. You're not. You're well, not wrong. My sister who lives in Danville, she doesn't want to do have anything to do with it. She doesn't have front porch for him. She doesn't nothing. Yeah. Like I, I tell her, I'm nosy. I want to know what's going on. <laughs> But that, you know, there are people like that that are, yeah. you can't, no matter what you do, you can't get them interested. But even the thing is that the, what's beautiful is that even somebody who doesn't want to go to the party, like, I don't want to go to the party, they might want to make brownies for the party and drop yeah. them off. Yeah. And then they, it's, that's equal. Yeah. Like, it, it's just, if you want to, you know, buy the cups and then go home and watch television, you're, that is still yeah. participating. Yeah. She always buys an apple pie when the church does their sale. <laughs> 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 Well, I think it's, it's about it's about showing people that there are different ways to yeah. do it. You don't have to be everyone. And, and also that more people makes less work, too, mm -hmm. right, when more people do that. So I may not be able to do things because I have kids or something like that, but I can do a little bit of something, right? And so I think that's that's to that point. Yeah, Barb. I, I noticed how many stickers around uh, made reference to seniors and accommodating seniors. Oh, uh, yeah. Because we're, uh -huh. we're all aging in place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Affordability, obviously, with uh, mm -hmm. 
<coughs> the uh, high cost of uh, homes that are just going up and up and up, and we wonder how we're going to get more people in here. And uh, you know, it's for younger people. It's when it goes in the opposite direction, so it's not. It easy. Do you think it's just housing, or is it just Everything. affordability of living? Living <laughs> taxes, right? Jobs. Yeah. Okay. Cost of living. Yeah. And one thing that might change the direction of settlement here is the fact of the infrastructure, uh, in, in, the, in particular the internet. That I mean, you can actually see people, like, because there's a question, like, if people want to move here, what the hell are they going to do when they get here? And, but that, I mean, you know, there are, now there's the possibility of really running a professional life yes. Yes. from your home because yes. of that. So I'm hoping that that will have a positive effect. Okay. You know? That's a big accomplishment. It is. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I was talking to Jan about it while everybody was talking. It's just the idea of like so many people work from home or they can have home based businesses and they have they things. Have and so, how do we support that? Yeah. Like, yeah. how can we as a town just in general support that people can? I mean, so I've turned that cafe in my house right now into my office. I've got like a little conference table. Like, if you all need a place to meet, just, just go there. Mm -hmm. I have the doors on. Uh, <laughs> I'm telling you that. Take stuff. Uh, but but, right, but, but mm. people don't need to, to travel necessarily to do their work. And it's home-based right. businesses, and we want to support that. We just got to figure out how and what that means. Well, and then we yeah. want somewhere to go to have a sandwich where we can run into somebody. Mm -hmm. Right. We, we do now. We do, but I'm, it, it, uh, we do. But, but the, yeah, that's right. just back to the idea of more, more, you know, if everybody's working from home, having more places to go where we can be social is good. Yeah. Anything else stands out to you? I think I was uh, interested that there were two comments to keep the roads as they are and to pave the roads. There were two, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like I know yeah, exactly. they were too, yeah. 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 There was a few moments of conflict. Oh. <laughs> it made that poster particularly exciting. <laughs> but, but my argument is always just that if you pave the roads, then people want to live here. And that would and be, go too fast. You know, I, that's right. Uh, to me, I just feel like it's a good deterrent. As <laughs> 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 part of the growth plan. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I, mean, growth. I should say that so I come from Massachusetts, um, and I, you know, went through in the first twenty or twenty-five years of my life the movement of my town from being a totally rural town to being one that was entirely bedroom community. In fact, I remember the planning meeting where they literally announced when we've reached what's called maximum build-out. Every parcel of land has, been, you know, like, is a, now it, it was a smaller uh, acreage than ours. But anyway, and it just, you know, like, it happens very slowly, it happens very logically, um, and you have to kind of keep this plan in mind if you're going to avoid discovering that suddenly the place has changed entirely, and often the people who were most resistant to controls early on are the ones who are most um, irritable about the changes that occur because of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so true. <coughs> Anything else? Yeah. I'll bring up the uh, co conservation. I feel like maybe it's time to revisit our zoning districts and really think about, you know, a lot has changed at the state level with conservation stuff. And I think in a really good way with the, this new 30 by 30 law and trying to conserve more and um, we have a more thoughtful conservation design, mm -hmm. kind of like what are the important areas instead of the way our zoning approaches that now is like, well, most of the town is this you know, rural residential area and kind of here are the big picture ways you're allowed to develop that. I, I think it would be helpful to be a little more fine tuned and. What are these core habitat blocks that we should really be trying to protect? How does that look? What is the 30 by 30? Oh, sorry. The idea that we should have 30% of Vermont land should be conserved by 2030 and 50% by 2050, That's which means like conservation yeah. easement somehow protected from development. Yeah. Um, Currently, 10% of Callus's acreage is in conservation. Mm -hmm. And just the Guess looking at the at the overview map and the um, UVA, the current use overlay, it looks like more than half of Calus acreage is actually in 
current use, so it's, oh, it's working for us. Mm. So we're 50 there, but only 10 is, is actually in conservation. Mm. So it's in, in large part of sort of public education mm. effort, mm. you know, which is what we talk about, we hope we're going to start doing in the Conservation Commission because that's <coughs> it's one important area where we should be doing more, mm -hmm. just reaching out to people and, and trying to work with people and actually making it a point to go to people and, and sit down and talk to them about these things. So somewhere I read, do you all agree that we are a bedroom community? Yeah. By definition, yes. Seem to have been. Hmm? You mean because we don't have businesses? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Who bedroom that? community is just the <laughs> idea that you, you just <laughs> you sleep and live there, but you work somewhere else. Yeah. Which I think the nature of what the town is, it's going to be that. You're not going to get a majority of people working here. I don't know, since COVID, it's so many right. people work That's more people are going to work right. now. Right. I never leave my house. Right. <laughs> I work remote in it. <laughs> and now that the internet, CD5 right. and all yeah. that's here, I think that, that could... Does the yeah. demographic yeah. numbers we can get, will it be able to tell us anything like that about like how many people are working from home? I think so. Oh, not, I don't know, not working from home, but... Uh, it depends, because when you file your federal income tax, Right. If you say 25% or how, whatever it is in the Lister file anymore, uh, you know, so much, then, right. then you know that that's a home business. Right. But interestingly, my daughter works for the state and she works remotely, but she cannot do that because the state's paying her. It has to be a home owned business in right. order to calculate that 25% off. Huh. Right. So it, de it depends on how you define it because you just use the term a home business. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't referring to a home business. I was right. referring to people who are employed by somebody else, mm -hmm. but they're working from home now. Right. That's true. Yeah. But then they're, yeah. 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 You just say you can't track that. But you can't really track that. Well, you can at least you track the number of cartridges. Uh, yeah, they do keep track of that. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. They do take track of that. Yeah. 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 The streets tracking it. Uh, yeah. There, there's, there's a survey. survey. Sure. Sure. During the day, sure. and see yeah. how many people are in, like sitting by a computer using a heat sensor. Yeah. And I think it's, just, it's an interesting question. We need to find any type of data on what that is, because that's and you're right. There are two different things. There's home-based business, and then there's I'm working from home, mm -hmm. which are two different two different things. But if I'm a home-based business, mm -hmm. I maybe have, can have one or two employees. True. So then that brings other people into town and, and buying food at our various stores. <laughs> and they need to hit the pub after work. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I, I like the question. I think it's some good data that we could try. I mean, I don't know how yeah. good of data you could find on that, but I think that that's worth at least trying to find. Go back to that survey issue again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, just as we talk about all these things that we want and we should change, I'd be curious, have we surveyed, like, what do you love about Calus? Why did you move here if you moved here, and why did you stay if you stayed? Have you done this sort of research before? Because as someone who's lived in four different states, like, I have a lot of feelings about why we yeah. moved here and why we don't want to right. leave because right. of different <laughs> things. But I would like to put those on the table and make sure that we work to maintain or really That's work right. with yeah. those things. You know, one thing that occurred to me in this meeting is that, and I know that this doesn't lead to anywhere very logistically meetable or something, but, you know, when you were talking about staying here and you're talking about, like, I, I don't want to live in a town, I, I feel like a priority should be to protect the interests somehow of the people who are already here and struggling to live here, and that I don't want to live in a town where people are leaving because they can't afford it, mm -hmm. and, and I don't, I don't want to live in a town that's that's comprised entirely of of, of, of migratory um, money. That sounds terrible. I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> but I mean, I want to live in a place where there's a huge range of people, mm -hmm. and I don't, I don't want to live in a homogenous place. And so, if somehow in all of the metrics and decisions that we make, that is somewhere in the, in our minds, yeah. I don't know. I feel like that's a really significant issue given our demographics and the fact that over the next 10 years, there's going to be a lot of shifting, right? Yeah. People are going to be... I think we got to get yeah. way ahead of that ball. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Yeah. As is um, climate refugees. Yes, exactly. Yeah. 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 It's a whole different. And I think that's the, I think that's the challenge, at least from my perspective, as new here, is that balance between those things. Yeah. Like, how do you do that? How do you know that things are going to change in the next? And how do you get ahead of it? Well, but keeping what you like and love about it, because that it, sometimes those aren't the same things. And so, how do you do that the right way? I think. Working in the town office, we see, have the opportunity to see people who are moving into town, moving mm -hmm. to Vermont and Dallas because they're climate refugees. Mm -hmm. They've moved here from California or someplace else yeah. in the South. Um, so, and they only stayed a year. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you've got, you've got a room of volunteers sitting here. Mm -hmm. So as we think about whether or not it's feasible to do a survey as part of this, you might want to consider so that it's not one more thing that the Planning Commission has to take on and do, you might want to consider the idea of developing a volunteer survey work group. <laughs> and you've got a target audience right here. For all the nosy people. <laughs> <laughs> You're already doing so much there, Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anything else? Yeah. I, I have a, one question about what your next steps are. Mm -hmm. um, so with all these great ideas that you guys are going to take back and synthesize and analyze, uh, analyze and so forth, <coughs> what will be your process for, so let's say you read these different sticky notes and you're like, what a great idea, I wonder what he meant by that. I wonder <laughs> what's behind his thinking. How will you know who to follow up with? That's it. A little bit of question. We, we only have your addresses on that site. I know, you don't know so what we don't, wrote. We don't know, and we don't know what people wrote. No. I should have had y'all put your email on there. Or, or your initials or something. Oh, well, the one. initials on that, we know what Larry put on, because he put Larry Bush <laughs> on his. <him. laughs> <laughs> necessarily wants to be contacted about their idea, but I'm just, think, I'm just thinking the next steps, if you guys read something and went, I wonder what was behind that, what did he mean? <coughs> you know, it, we, how you're going to follow up? Email in order to implement that, uh, we would have to have the, um, people who want to be contacted to put their email address as they go out, sign mm -hmm. put their email address next to their name, <coughs> and we could tabulate all of this and where we have questions, we would just right next to the, you know, what the heck is happening? <laughs> and it would be up to you. We could send it out to all of you. It would be up to you to get back in touch with us. Yeah, this, this could be put into a, a spreadsheet with right, the, the, exactly. the notes and then just send that out to everyone who's here that wants to be contacted. So, okay. so we wouldn't, it wouldn't be certain that we would get an answer. And even if you didn't but, have an answer about it, but right. if I saw my little notes on your list and I could say, I wrote that one, I wrote that one, I wrote that right. one. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, we can mm -hmm. we definitely put it together. That's something we, we can do. Yeah. yeah, and I think that the next step is, one, yes, to get the information together, to synthesize and put it all together. But then I think we've, we've kind of been talking as we've gone about maybe doing more meetings. Um, we've talked about that Friends of Callis is doing their spaghetti dinner and that trying to have something there. Um, I've talked about how the school sends out the entire directory, right, of all the parents and me trying to, yeah, it's just all the information's right there. Be glad you don't want to, you know. And like getting, getting different viewpoints, like me going to parents of kids at the school and asking the same questions and trying to start to bring all that together. Yeah. Yeah. So we also have town meeting coming up on yeah. March 5th. So either if you or Jan or Melanie or Gary or Vicki or whoever wants to contact the moderator, Gus Seelig, and ask to have two minutes on the agenda that day. Good. We can do that. Yeah, and I, I think we've, we've also good. just talked about now, as we talked about, we had talked at Planning Commission to have a survey and we started making questions and then we kind of stopped because we said let's have a meeting first and let's see what people yeah. and then we go but i think maybe now we might go in the direction well, of we, having a survey we, we know what questions to ask yeah so now we, we know have, we kind of have a better, a better idea, idea of what to ask and so i think that that may be coming too then in the future um does that answer the question i mean it's you jan you want to say anything or anybody else about that like where we go next 
Your idea, you're not, you're, you're not. Your <laughs> idea of a work group is is uh, really cool. When you brought it up, I actually was saying, okay, how many houses are there in town? And if I visited 20 of them a week, how long would it take? <laughs> so. I, I think the idea of the work group would be uh, if you are interested in helping the planning commission in, in the survey, you know, we're not saying everybody has to be on the planning commission. But we are saying people can help us do the work or help the planning commission do the work. Um, well, if you, if you put your emails on that, that can be put one of the things that we put in an email out to all of you is to say, you know, and if you would like to help with, you know, a work group for the sur for doing a survey, just email us back. I'm like, we could, we could do that. So, T. And on the long lines of visiting everyone, I know we've talked about this in the context of neighbors helping neighbors with some people is, some people aren't going to answer the door to Gary if they don't know who Gary is. Like, he looks lovable, but I'm not going to let a strange man in my house. <laughs> so, but making sure you have people throughout town who live, you know, make sure North Callis is represented, make sure South Callis is represented, make sure, you know, make sure there's our representatives who are willing to go see people who live within half a mile of them, and that way it's a familiar face, because you can say, that's my house, that's my dog, but sorry they barked at you that one time, like, and then you know the person who's coming to ask you the questions. And I think a working survey does help with that too. Yeah. Because then you can just go to people you know and go, hey, will you fill this out? Yeah. So if they have that information. Well, I think I think this has been very productive. I know that this has been fantastic. Yeah, Plenty really has. Fantastic. Um, we thank you all for being here. Yep. Sunday afternoon. You're all here. Thank you.